Hey guys, what's up? Shadowlands back with another video. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to speed up combat arms or actually any application once again, this time from a networking perspective instead of just what you can do to speed up your computer perspective. So today I'm going to be showing you a lot of tips and tricks on how to make your internet connection faster and this will actually work for just about any application, uh, any game, anything you want to do. You can even use this to speed up your general internet browsing if it's too slow. However, I will warn you, none of these tricks except for the first one I show you is going to work on a dial-up connection. Now granted, I don't know how you're even watching a YouTube video on dial-up connection but uh, for that matter it's not going to help you very much the first one might but I doubt anything else will and the first one happens to be the only thing that's client side but before I go into any of the tips I want to say I'm very sorry for the audio I realize it's pretty crap it's because I'm not at my normal computer because the router that I have there is not typical it's not one you can even find on the market so if I were to show you that and try to work through the tips there it wouldn't be very effective because you guys would learn nothing that's why I moved to a different place I have a different mic I know it's not as good but uh, it's all I'm able to muster to actually show you guys this video so I apologize deeply for that if you have questions please do ask me if I don't make something clear enough but for right now I'm going to go dive on into the tips. So we're going to go to our control panel. I'm starting off by showing us the DNS servers and how to change them once again. This is my list of tips up here that I'll be going over. I'm actually starting with this one because it's the only one that's client side and I don't have to go into a whole lot just yet. So we're coming here to your control panel. This should also work on XP. I am on Windows 7 right now. We're going to go to network and internet and then we're going to come up here and go view network status and tasks over here to change adapter settings and then you're going to find a bunch of probably connections. I have several. You might just have one. You want the one that is green barred like this without the red X. If it's red X, it will not work anyway. You're going to click on it and say properties or right click on it and say properties. Now, you're going to see a list of things here. It's going to look really funky and weird. You'll have no idea what's going on. But you want the one that says Internet Protocol Version 4 TCP IPv4. Now, you may have one that says Internet Protocol Version 4 without this tag at the end. You need the one with the tag. And you don't want 6. You want 4. It makes a difference. You're going to click Properties, and you're going to come down here. Instead of saying Obtain DNS Server Automatically, because it's going to say this by default, you're going to change it to Use the Following DNS Server Addresses. Make sure the first one is 4 eights and the second one is 8844. This is Google's DNS Server. It's really, really fast compared to the one that you will probably have defaultly set or using automatically, so I highly suggest you use this. Now with that set, we're done here. That was all we needed to do. I'm going to put a little tick mark at the end here to say that I've done it. And you're probably going to hear my elephant typing throughout the entire video, so I apologize for that. But let's keep on moving. So I'm going to go into here. If you're on Windows XP, you'll have to type this in manually. I have a quick shortcut here, and most of you with Windows 7 probably will. But I'm going to show you guys how to open up command prompt. You're going to go cmd.exe and click enter. Now you can also, if you're on XP, you will likely have to go to run and you will find this little program called run and you can also do that by typing in cmd.exe is here as well that will open it up two ways to do it now the only thing here I have to warn you about is my font looks kinda weird as well you'll see I have little yen symbols right here little Japanese yen symbols that's because I have a Japanese translator you should see slashes that look like okay I guess you actually won't see that uh, you will have slashes that look like this if you look over here you need these kind of slashes the forward slash thing or backwards backslash that's what it's called now you need to be in your regular C drive for this to work you will not be able to do it if you have any extra directories here especially if you're on XP I believe if you have Windows 7 ultimate for some reason it, this doesn't matter but you're gonna need to go change directory CD space capital C this is opening up your C drive colon and then that yen symbol thing that I was giving you earlier in this case it's this for it's this backslash thing over here that I'm highlighting so keep that in mind on the notepad over here so that's what you need to have. And once you have this open, you're going to go ipconfig uh, forward slash, the other slash this time, all. And it's going to give you a bunch of information. You need to scroll up until you find one that says uh, default gateway. And I have a whole bunch of stuff here because I have like 20 different connections. But I need the one that says default gateway oh, right here. It's going to look something like this, 192.168. And it'll probably be 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, something like that. In this case, mine's 1.1. So I'm going to come into my browser here, and you need to remember that number. I'm going to write mine down here so you guys can uh, remember what it is. It looks something like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this. Uh, I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to put it in here. Now, I already have my password put in, so I was able to immediately get onto this, but a lot of you will have to put in admin passwords. Now, usually these are not changed. Your parents probably didn't change these. It is not the same as your internet password. What you need to do is go look up your router. It will tell you what your router is when you uh, go in to put in your password, and what you need to do is find O. 
my I have this router, so go look up something like this. In this case, I have a uh, Linksys uh, E3000, I believe. So I would go Linksys E3000, uh, except with two words there. I can't type apparently. Linksys E3000 default password is what you want to search. And then, okay, I've already used this link earlier, so I know it works. But right here it says for most versions of my router, the default password is admin. And your password is going to be admin as well. So that And your username is almost always going to be admin. So your username will almost always be admin, 99.9% .9 of the time. Now, being honest, the password is either going to be password or admin, one of the two, and you usually get three tries. But look up your specific router just in case. So now that you're onto your router, here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to port forward and a couple of other things. So first, we're going to come over here to Applications and Gaming. Now, I haven't done this, but I'm going to show you how to do it. What you can do is you can set individual things here based on what your game does. Now, Combat Arms is a game, so it needs to have very quick access to everything. Now, if you're looking at just speeding up the messenger, like the chat system, that is HTTP and a few other things here as well, but HTTP is the thing that works because the chat system actually works through a, re a web browser function built into the Combat Arms engine. You don't need to worry about anything else here, so you would give yourself HTTP, and then you would be able to set your IP address. You would change this to whatever your IP address is, and if you want to figure that out, you can go back to command prompt. I'm going to open up quickly here for the sake of uh, ease. Go change directory, C, change this. And I'm going to go IP config all again. And you can scroll all the way back up to where you found your uh, default gateway and look for the IP address that is yours. In my case, I have 192.168.1.7. Uh, that's mine. It's going to be the one that's on my internet connection. You don't want the one that you have for the internet in total. So you can't go look that up. You have to look at that on your uh, uh, your command prompt. You can't look that up online and say, what is my IP.org? Because that's not the one you want. So I would change this to a 7, and that would speed up my messenger connection. Now, in my case, I'm not going to do this and make sure to click enabled. Now, every router is going to look different, so it's going to have different tabs. Sometimes they're over here on the left. It's going to look weird, but these are the things you need to look for. Now, the main thing here that I'm going to come for, and this is really big for anything, uh, if you come over here to QoS, you want to find something called QoS. I have no idea what tab it's going to be under. I've seen it under status bars, administration bars, wireless bars, and weird separate bars like this. But QoS is the thing you want to find. Now, once you come here, this is something that I'm going to teach you how to set up separately. It's going to ask you how to set up this. And now, by default, it's going to be disabled. And your quality of service, your, WW, your WMM support is going to be uh, enabled as well. You want that to be disabled. I know it's strange, and it will tell you that WMM support is meant to make games faster and so forth. It does not, because the way it works is that it equally distributes the internet to every device connected. So the more devices you have connected, the less bandwidth your individual device will have for whatever it has to do. So let's say you have two, two devices connected, one simply browsing Facebook and one playing Combat Arms. Both of them are going to get equal amounts of bandwidth. It's not going to allocate it based on what it needs. So you need to say disabled so that the Facebook person will have less bandwidth but still have enough to browse and you have enough to play your game. This is especially useful when you're watching TV at the same time. However, this also makes it worse when you are just using one device at once. So if a bunch of devices are dead and one device or one guy's off watching TV, it's really going to screw over his experience. So you may need to turn this off and on as you need it. But as long as you're playing Combat Arms, you want to go and make it disabled. As far as the acknowledgement thing, that should gray out. Almost every single router is going to have that. Don't worry about it. Next, if you have one, not all routers have one, but most do, especially a lot of Linksys routers. Internet Access Priority, it may be called IAP, by the way, and it writes it out here, but not always. It's usually disabled. You enable it, and here's where you add stuff. You can go to Applications. This is what I was talking about earlier, how you can add a bunch of different applications. And you can come here, and you can select it if it's here already, or you can add a new application, enter a name, and then it will ask you to enter a couple of port numbers. You will always want it to be on both. You won't usually have to worry about TCP and UDP unless you are hosting a server yourself, but that's not the purpose of this tutorial, so I'm not going to be teaching you how that works. Now, in this case, you're going to look up. I want to say, oh, what ports do combat arms use? I typed it in earlier, so it's already here. And I'm just going to click on this one here. In this case, Combat Arms specifically uses 4000 and 4001. It's going to be different for every single piece of software, so it's not that really big or important. But if you're using Combat Arms, 4000 and 4001. Now, the way you want to set this up, I've already done it down here, you can see. But I would want to come to Online Games because it, you know, it's set for online games. I'm going to say Add a New Game because obviously Combat Arms isn't there by default. I don't know where they get these random game ideas. Oh, let's just toss Guild Wars Factions 1 and 2 in here. 
but in our name, I entered Combat Arms because that's the game that I'm playing. I'm going to call it Combat Arms 1 right now because that's what I'm playing. And I would say 4,000 because that's the lower bound, and 4,001 is the higher bound. And then you would want it on both, and you would click High, set it to High. Usually routers will have it set to High by default because that's what you're changing it for, obviously. Mine was set to Medium, but you want to change that to the highest one possible and click Apply. Now, you don't need to worry about this screwing over the rest of your internet, and I'm not going to add this one because I've actually already added one here, but you don't need to worry about this screwing over the rest of your internet experience because it will only activate that uh, priority thing if that software is running and that port is active. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. It's not going to hurt anything else. So with that, I've taught you how to port forward to Combat Arms, and I've taught you how to set your ports on the uh, other page there, so that was useful. And I taught you how to turn off WMM. So we've covered all of that and changing DNS servers. Now we're going to set your channel width. This is the one thing that I suggest you do a little research on before you actually go and try to do this. I'm going to tell you how to do it, but you need to look up stuff and see if it's smart for you to do it. I can't tell you whether it's good or not without looking at your router myself. And I can't do that for every person on the internet, obviously. So I'm going to have to just show you how to do it and let you guys make the decision yourself. So channel width, you are going to have a 5 gigahertz and a 2.4 gigahertz. If you have the option, you want to set it to 40 megahertz only, and you want your channel to be on DFS. You don't want it to be on any of these set ones here. Now, if on your 2.4, this should be set to 1, 5, or 6. This is because of the frequency that re resonates well with the walls and stuff that houses are usually made out of and what your computer is going to pick up. So this is the easiest one to pick up for speed. Other ones are good for distance. So if you wanted to go for really, really far away, 2, 3, 4, 8, and 9 are the best. But we want the best quality, so we're going for 1, 5, and 6. However, that only works if you are set to auto 20 and 40. Or if you have the option to, you would need to find another piece of software to add this to your router. But you could go and make it so it's 40 megahertz only. However, that should only by default be available for a 5 gigahertz wireless setting. So you want to set that to 40. And you want this to be on the highest, uh, highest range possible or highest default possible. So in my case, 20 or 40. Some of you may have 40 already installed. Some of you may only have 20 available. That's all right. So that concludes the whole point about changing your channels and making sure that is optimized to work. Now when you're done with all this, after you finish doing anything, always click save settings. Now I'm not going to because I actually need this to be set on 20 and auto for right now because I'm doing some other stuff besides just flying combat arms. But you would always want to save settings when you're done. In this case, I'm not going to do that because I have my stuff set up the way I need it. So that, can, that concludes basically what I want to show you with your router stuff. There's a few other things I might show you later if these don't solve a lot of the problems. If you have individual issues, definitely come talk to me or send me a private message. I would be happy to help you as long as I don't have to spend more than like three hours writing your response. So uh, try to keep your questions pretty concise. A last couple of few tips I'm going to give you. These aren't things I can show you, but just tips I can give you. Connect with a Ethernet cable instead of just wireless. If you have the option to connect directly to your router or your modem using an Ethernet cable, use it. That's always faster than the wireless and provides the most secure, you know, obvious connection. You don't have to worry about any security breaches that go through wireless. Not that most of you should have to worry about that, but it's a thing, so keep that in mind. Ethernet's always faster than wireless pretty much any time. Get a better wireless chip if you must use wireless. A lot of computers will come with these really crappy 30-foot range, um wireless adapters, especially desktops these days and motherboards that you buy, especially if you built your own computer. So I highly suggest you go and buy a better one. If you have a Mac, I don't really know why you'd be able to play Combat Arms without running Wine or something or some kind of uh, virtual machine. But if you have a Mac, it already comes with one of these, so don't worry about that. But what you want is a 300 foot range, five to 600 gigahertz. That's also exactly maxed, uh, matched up to the channel that you have that we set earlier when we were saying 40 and 20 gigahertz. This works with either of those two ranges, so 5 to 600 gigahertz should be best. If you can get a 500, a 500 is actually better than a 600. Higher number does not necessarily mean better. Um, it just has to do with resonance and how your computer picks up the frequency, so it's just physics stuff I don't want to explain right now. And then the last tip, and this is pretty obvious, uh, move closer to the router. The closer you are, the better, um, especially if you have one of those crappy 30-foot uh, adapters, so that's just the thing. But other than that, that concludes all of my tips, guys. I hope you guys found this useful. I'm really sorry for the mic quality. I will be back to my good mic for the next video. Thank you for watching and putting up with this one, and I will see you guys next time. If you have questions, definitely post them in the comment section below. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. See you in the next video. Shatterlance out.